Peace does not mean an absence of conflicts. Differences will always be there. Peace means solving these differences through peaceful means, through dialogue, education, knowledge, and through humane ways. During the siege of Sarajevo in 1992 and 93, a marketplace bombing killed 22 people. Cellist Vedran Smelovic honored them by playing the Albinoni Adagio in G minor in the rubble for 22 days, one day for each victim. Johann Galtung, one of the original founders of the field of peace and conflict studies, described a triangle of violence divided like this, suggesting an iceberg. Direct violence is the visible element, behavior of people against people. Structural and cultural violence are the parts below the line which may not be obvious, but are critical to creating peace. We can't achieve peace without addressing structural violence. South Africa's apartheid system provides a profound example of structural violence. The official policy of racial segregation, including separate residential and business zones for each racial group, prevented blacks from thriving and contributed to direct violence and hostilities. Nelson Mandela was jailed for fighting this system. Persistent advocacy from within South Africa and around the globe contributed to the release of Nelson Mandela by F.W. de Klerk. And the effects remain years after the end of apartheid. Sibonsele Shabalala says, When I look at my white peers, I realize that as hard as I have worked to gain an education, we did not start from the same playing field. My parents, my grandparents, and my great-grandparents, they suffered and the consequences are still coming to me as a young black South African. When our government after 1994 became a government of national unity, the people who sat together as government were people who had been at each other's throats. F.W. de Klerk had been one of those who had kept Nelson Mandela in jail. He ended up being a deputy president and they had to sit together. Those who had been formerly enemies now becoming or trying to become friends. And all one is saying is, how about giving peace a chance? This model considers structural violence to be a cause of direct violence. If we have no direct violence, but we haven't dealt with what's built into the structure, we have what has been called negative peace. To flip that statement, if we can eliminate structural violence by reducing inequality and increasing social justice, we have the roots of positive peace that is more sustainable. True peace is not merely the absence of war, it is the presence of justice. Positive peace has, I think, two basic components. One is equity, or to spell it out, cooperation for mutual and equal benefit. Please underline the two words, and equal. That leaves out neoliberalism and raw capitalism as a way of building peace. There is an element of mutual benefit but certainly not equal. Empathy is related to harmony. Empathy meaning understanding the other as other understands him and herself. Harmony is feeling sorrow when other is sorrow. Feeling the joy of other as a joy. Sharing sorrow, sharing joy, emotional resonance. But then comes the negative part. There are two things threatening all of this. Trauma and conflict, unresolved conflict. The trauma, that's the violence of the past. And the way to handle that one is reconciliation. It is, a, it is something that seeks to contribute to the healing of a traumatized 
a fragmented, a wounded people. We are all wounded. And we need to be healed. And the commission is something that says we make a contribution, but every South African must be involved in seeking to work for reconciliation. John Paul Lederach is a peace builder who has worked in some of the dangerous conflicts of recent decades, and he's a professor of peace and conflict studies at Notre Dame. He says reconciliation is a place where concerns about both the past and the future can meet. For this to happen, he says, people must find ways to encounter themselves and their enemies, their hopes and their fears. Truth can be seen as the longing for acknowledgement of wrong and the validation of painful loss and experiences, but needs to be coupled with mercy, which articulates the need for acceptance, letting go, and a new beginning. Justice represents the search for individual and group rights, for social restructuring, and for restitution, but it is linked with peace, which underscores the need for interdependence, well-being, and security. Man must evolve for all human conflict, a method which rejects revenge, aggression, and retaliation. The foundation of such a method is love. Canada's residential school system is responsible for a dark part of Canada's history. A goal of the schools was to assimilate Indigenous peoples into the dominant Canadian culture. The schools removed children from their families, their culture, and their language, and subjected them to abuse. They were left ill-equipped to fit into communities and deal with the racism and other trauma they experienced when they got out. This affected generations of Native people for over 150 years. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission submitted its report in 2015 with 94 calls to action to begin to make things right. Sing loud and do that forever, my young friend, so that people will come to realize what could have always been. Reconciliation will take time, Sinclair noted. The harm affected generations and it may take some generations to heal. A new relationship needs to be forged that respects all people. I give you my word that we will renew and respect that relationship. Achieving reconciliation, as I observed in June of this year, is like climbing a mountain. We must proceed one step at a time. Point about creativity is to say, is there something we can do with the context? Bringing in some aspects of a new reality so that the goals become compatible. Ecuador and Peru have fought numerous wars over the border between their two countries. In 1995, skirmishes again erupted. This time they came up with a way not to draw the border, but instead to define an area they would share. Hence, the Condor Kutuku Conservation Corridor was created. Between 1989 and 2003, civil war tore the country of Liberia apart. Killings, rapes, and other atrocities overwhelmed the country. Lima Bowie grew from a teen into adulthood during this time and hit a point where she thought she had to do something to stop it. A meeting with several other women turned into a massive movement as Lima and others rallied women from across religious and ethnic divides to form the Women of Liberia Mass Action for Peace. They donned white t-shirts and stood on the streets day after day until President Charles Taylor agreed to attend peace talks. They continued pressure to ensure delegates didn't leave the talks. The women became a political force, and their continued persistent efforts led to a peace in Liberia and the election of the first female head of state, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Women peace builders are not just the ones you see in suits at the UN, but they're also peace builders in the community, in the villages. Those are the ones who are nurturing and sustaining their societies. Each of our individual actions is like a single spider web 
fragile perhaps, but when united with others, capable of halting the lion of war. As Lima Boy's experience illustrates, it's not just the professionals and top leaders who build peace. Much of the critical work happens at the grassroots level. We need people at every level and in every kind of role. For the effort can never end. Our relationships need tending, like a plant to grow healthy roots. And as John Paul Lederach said, once you make peace, start over. Peace is a daily, a weekly, a monthly process, gradually changing opinions, slowly eroding old barriers, quietly building new structures. Indeed, we can all play a part in creating structures and societies that sustain peace. Top leaders are important, professional peace builders are needed, and most important, all of us have a role in creating peace. <laughs>